school biographer Duncan Larkholm, who wrote Prince Harry, The Inside Story, says Meghan's Ellen appearance is her attempt to redeem herself after her court blunder. Duncan says, having to apologize for misremembering facts in court is a blow to Meghan. She's caused chaos for herself, and has now somewhat lost control of the narrative, and Harry and Meghan like to have their voices heard and share their so-called truths. Meghan's image and reputation are absolutely everything to her, so if either of those are negatively affected, she's got to do something to rectify things. The Ellen interview was, in my view, a form of damage control. Duncan says, I really wouldn't be surprised if they're planning another Oprah interview. Harry and Meghan have caused chaos and I suspect there's no stopping them. I can totally see more of these high-profile, Hollywood-style interviews with A-list TV hosts happening. Especially if there's lots of money being offered for it. Harry will need promotion for his memoir, due to be released next autumn, too. Another Oprah interview, if it's anything like the last, would surely push the royals to breaking point. Following their first Oprah interview, the Queen released a statement saying she was saddened by the accusations, and recent reports claim Harry and the rest of his family are barely on speaking terms. But Meghan and Harry seem to hint at fondness for the Queen in June, when they named their daughter Lilibet, which is her pet name. And Duncan says that Harry will no doubt be anxious over his grandmother's health, there have been concerns for the Queen, after the 95-year-old spent a night in hospital, before pulling out of the COP26 Summit and Remembrance Day service. Duncan says, the Queen and Harry have always had a special relationship. At royal events, we've seen them exchange smiles and knowing glances. Although they're obviously not as close as they were, given the drama Harry and Meghan have caused. No doubt Harry's memoir will criticize the royals again. And that will hurt the Queen. But any homesickness or longing to see someone is heightened when someone's ill. So I expect, with these recent reports, it's dawning on Harry that he may not have long left to see his grandmother. As heartbreaking as it is, Maybe if the Queen does become ill it would be a major wake-up call for him. Harry and Meghan seem to have seamlessly transitioned into the showbiz circuit since their move to California. Harry has also done an interview with James Corden, while Meghan launched a charity campaign with actress Melissa McCarthy, and the couple have signed multi-million pound deals with Spotify, Netflix and Apple TV. And Duncan says that while the pair, who have continued to call themselves the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, still use their titles. The crossover of the royal and celebrity worlds could cause further damage to the royals. He adds, where it all went wrong for Meghan was that she couldn't understand the difference between a celebrity and a royal. A celebrity peddles their own image, their reputation and their brand and gets paid for it. But a royal can't do that because the public wouldn't have it, their job is to serve the people of the country and raise awareness about causes without any personal gain whatsoever. We wouldn't have a royal family if the royals did everything for their own fame and fortune. The fact she and Harry are still using their titles is dangerous, because people will start to ask, they are royals, but what are they doing all this for? For good, or for their own gain? There could be more drama to come, if there are more of these A-list interviews. Besides, The Princes and the Press is a two-part documentary fronted by Amol Rajan, that aired on BBC Two on Monday, with a second installment scheduled for next week. In the documentary, Royal commentator Camilla Tomini claimed all hell broke loose when Meghan began dating the Duke of Sussex. She said, I wasn't familiar with her name, I don't think anyone was at the time to be perfectly honest unless they had watched Suits, the legal drama she had been starring in. But that's a cable show, it's kind of a bit niche. We kept it so tight. It was me, my editor, the deputy editor, my news editor who were the only people who knew about the story. It didn't appear in any news list until it was on the page ready for production. I was watching my son Harry play football and all hell broke loose around the rest of Fleet Street. She later went on to say, he, Harry, does have a love-hate relationship with the press. I think he sort of resents out intrusion, maybe. Who can blame him? In August last year, Russian hackers allegedly stole hundreds of Harry and Meghan's personal photos including pictures of the Queen at their wedding in a security breach, according to a book. According to the bombshell biography, Finding Freedom, a source claimed the alleged data leak was a wake-up call for the couple. Co-authors Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durand wrote, On September 12, 2018, a computer programmer based in Russia managed to hack an online cloud storage account that contained over 200 unseen photos of Harry and Meghan that had been taken by the photographer Alexei Lobomirsky. Among the stolen images were pictures of the couple sharing personal moments during their engagement photo series as well as others from their wedding day reception, including some of the Queen. The large set also included outtakes with eyes half-closed and other unflattering moments meant for the trash can. The hacker leaked a handful of photos to Tumblr, photo-sharing site. Many fans assumed they were fake, 
photoshopped images but behind the scenes there was concern at Kensington Palace when they received a tip about the security breach. Harry and Meghan were alarmed to hear that it was so easy to get such personal files of theirs.